Uh, it is not every day that you see a whole bunch of scientists standing up with champagne bottles and cheering, but today is no ordinary day. Take a look at that scene just a couple of hours ago in Switzerland at the Center for Nuclear Research, otherwise known as CERN. Now that's some enthusiasm. What's all the excitement about? Discovery of an itty bitty little particle, a subatomic particle like the one you see in this animation. Before you're checking out and your eyes are going all glossy and you think this is way beyond my ability to understand, I'm not a nuclear physicist and I never will be, consider this. If this discovery is what the scientists think it is, it could change everything. It could change everything we know about the world, much like the discovery of the nucleus 100 years ago. Think about that. Produced nuclear energy, produced pretty much everything we know about life at this point. Um, so we have enlisted the help of Michio Kaku, who is a uh, physics professor at City University of New York. This is going to be a tricky one because I think a lot of people are trying to make sense of what the God particle means, what it means to their life, and what it means to the question of how did we get here. Can you break this down and what this significance it really is? Well, there's a reason why physicists are dancing around their atom smashers, even as we <laughs> speak. They spent a lifetime, 30 years, $10 billion searching for this particle. Now, the God particle, we physicists wince when we hear those words, but there's some truth to that. The Bible says that God said, let there be light, and there was the universe. Physicists say there was a Big Bang, an explosion 13.7 billion years ago. But what was the match? What was the fuse? What was the spark that lit the Big Bang? Where did the bang come from in the Big Bang Theory? We're clueless. We didn't know. And that's where the Higgs comes in. We think that a Higgs-like well, particle... Back up. Wait. The Higgs is part of the, what has been termed as the Higgs boson. Right. So explain the Higgs and the boson both. Okay. We're can. celebrating the fact that we have found a new particle never seen before in Mother Nature by slamming two beams of proton at trillions of, of electron volts. And this particle, we think, was in fact a particle like this, was the fuse that set off the explosion which created the universe. So that everything we see around us, the galaxies, the planets, the Earth, life itself, is a byproduct of an explosion which was set off by a Higgs-like particle. So I've, I've, this made a little bit of sense to me as I was mm -hmm. uh, trying to make sense of it today, uh, that the Higgs field broke the symmetry of a uniform soup of weightless particles produced by the Big Bang, giving everything we know mass and making the universe possible. That's right. We think that originally the universe was a gas of particles with no mass at all. Think of a crystal, beautiful crystal, totally symmetrical, but useless. It exploded. And the shattering of this crystal gave us all the masses of the particles today. The electron, the proton, the neutron, the atom. Why do we have a nucleus? Why do we have a proton? Because they have masses. So the explosion of the particle broke the original perfect symmetry of this crystal, giving us the broken world we see today of planets, stars, galaxies, you, me, even love. All of it from this explosion triggered by a Higgs-like particle. Okay, it's still very complex, but... I know that you often break out into uh, the sociological implications of science as well. This is the beginning of a very, very big conversation, isn't it? This isn't just science. This is how science may actually disprove religion because you said you cringe when you hear God particle. Is, is that where we may be headed to this? Even more than that, realize that the Higgs boson takes us to the instant of creation itself and we can run the videotape before the Big Bang. We can talk about the universe before the creation of the universe itself. If our universe is a soap bubble of some sort and it's expanding, there could be other soap bubbles out there, other universes. And so this is where the next step beyond the Large Hadron Collider comes in. We're going to look for evidences of a pre-Big Bang universe, perhaps the existence of other universes. And then, of course, we have the question that everyone asks me, is Elvis Presley still alive in another <laughs> parallel universe? Is he? Maybe. <laughs> you can't rule it out. Come on. We're going there? Really? We're going into areas that, that take us before the instant of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We're talking about going before the beginning itself. I tell you, this is deep. This is really deep. It has philosophical, theological implications as we talk about a universe, a parallel universe, other universes out there coexisting with ours, and the Large Hadron Collider, this gigantic machine in Geneva, 
is the key to perhaps proving the existence of these other dimensions. The Hadron Collider is the is the, basically the machine where you said this smashing occurred. That's right. Isn't that extraordinarily dangerous? I don't know your job, but isn't that... Doesn't that hold a potential for disaster? Not at all. Realize no. that Mother Nature thinks of this gigantic colossal machine as a pea shooter. In outer space, cosmic rays hit the Earth every second, just as energetic as our most powerful beams of protons here on the planet Earth. Here we can create controlled beams of protons, slam them together to create the Higgs boson. Mother Nature in outer space, in the Milky Way galaxy, does it all the time. And hey, we're still here. We are. You know what? Listen, you and I need a, an hour uh, to, to mm -hmm. go over this more because while I understand the larger concept, mm -hmm. I'm still having a really tough time mm -hmm. understanding the subatomic concept and uh -huh. how that really does create the larger concept. But for anybody who um, doesn't know about your book, it's awesome. Physics of the Future, I highly recommend it. Uh, go get it now. Mashio Kaku, uh, also a professor at City University here in, in New York. It's great to see you. Thank you for that. Right. You made English of it, which is wonderful because <laughs> this is a tricky subject to say the very least.